We're going to just do a quick thing here. I'm going to show you briefly the exam, and it's just a review. We've done this before, but but the the fundamentals of brachial plexus evaluation are history, what's the patient present with, and then the exam, does it fit the, the uh, diagnosis? And then we do electrodiagnostic studies on these patients. And there's a, there's a, a group from Denver that documented C8 nerve root conduction velocities and median brachiocutaneous sensory nerve action, which is, I know that's a big word, but they documented those as very fundamental. We also can rule out other things, cervical disc disease, uh, carpal tunnel entrapment. So that's a very valuable um, tool. And then we do diagnostic blocks and you're gonna see a brief video about diagnostic blocks. Now we're also using, uh, occasionally we're using Botox injection in these muscles to see if they can give them several months of benefit because this is elective procedure. This is not cancer. So we're, we, we wanna maximize the case their outcome, and these are often young people, so we want we don't want to hurt them. Okay, so I'm just going to run through some brief, briefly the examination. So one of the things we do, we look at the you know chest and, and lungs, and we and then we do what's called the pectoralis minor stretch. So here's the pec minor. The pec minor is one of the two muscles that can entrap the brachial plexus. So we put the arm forward, and we ask the patient if there are any symptoms, and she doesn't have it. Right. Then we retract the muscle back like this. That stretches the pec minor. And that frequently will give them pain in the back, arm, or tingling in the arm. So that's the first thing we do. Then we do a shoulder abduction. So I'm gonna ask her to lock her elbow, point her thumb to the sky, and slowly go up and skin it, okay? So she goes up and people will say, I have symptoms when I get to 90 degrees, or I have symptoms at 120, and you can tell how far they can go up before their symptoms occur. The next thing we do is called an upper limb tension testing. Um, and so upper limb tension testing is three positions and it progressively stretches the nerve. Now, there's a lot of primary care doctors here or advanced care providers. So I hope this will be beneficial to you as you say, does this patient have thoracic outlet syndrome? So they go position one. So if you put your arm out, okay, you put your arm out to the side. That stretches the brachial plexus. Oh gosh, it seems I've got to speak loud. Okay. Okay. Then the next thing, we're going to stretch it more. That's position two. And then and they will have progressive symptoms of discomfort. And then position three, tilt your head to the right. Stretch it as far as you can. That stretches the scalene muscle up here. So that's the, the upper limb tension testing. Um, Okay, then we do a massage of the brachial plexus. So we, the, the brachial plexus at the scalene triangle is right here. So we massage it, we tap it, and we pressure it. Now, if you do that on yourself, it doesn't bother you. If it bothers you, come and see us. Okay, okay so, so that's just some fundamental tools that we use for um, evaluation. Thanks. Okay, so then the, the next thing we do is, and Dr. Melendez and I feel this is a very vital uh, examination. This is the uh, pectoralis minor and scalene blocks. So we do what's called a quick dash. And a quick dash is a, it's a disabilities of arm, shoulder, and hand. And it's a, it's a 19 question uh, questionnaire and people respond one to five on each question. And zero, I'm a zero, not really, but my quick dash is zero. So, uh, and uh, the worst it can be is a hundred. So the more severe their symptoms are, the higher their quick dash is. And that's a good tool for us to determine the severity. So then the next thing we do is a pectoralis minor and scalene block. So if you could run that video, that's what this is. An evaluation of brachial plexus entrapment, also known as TOS, thoracic outlet syndrome, the neurogenic part, the part where the nerves are entrapped. We do physical examination. We get a history of what the patient had. We use electrodiagnostic studies. We look at the x-ray to see if there's an abnormality of the rib structure. And a critical part of this evaluation is diagnostic blocks. So we do a diagnostic pectoralis minor and scalene muscle block. 
So here's a diagram that shows these areas. So this one on your left, my right, shows the clavicle, the brachial plexus, the subclavian artery, subclavian vein, and the pectoralis minor muscle. Pectoralis minor muscle attaches from the chest to the coracoid process of the uh, scapula. And what we do is we do a test on the patient. We run through some examinations that stress the brachial plexus. Then we inject this muscle with a small amount of lidocaine. We wait a few minutes and then we retest them. Does that cause pain? Yeah, a little bit right here. A little pain there. Is that any different than it was before? Yeah. I still feel a little bit in my ring finger. A little in your ring finger. Yeah. Okay. And the effect of that is does the paralyzed muscle now make their symptoms less as they stretch the brachial plexus so the muscle is no longer pushing on the nerves. The next part of that is the scalene muscle. So the scalene muscle on, in me is right here. And on this diagram, it's in the supraclavicular fossa. Uh, it's, it's medial and above the clavicle. So the brachial plexus travels through these muscles, underneath the clavicle, over the rib, and then underneath the pectoralis minor muscle. So in the second portion of this, with ultrasound guidance, we inject a small amount of lidocaine into the anterior scalene muscle. We wait for the lidocaine to have its effect, and then we retest them. The pain is not as bad in the front, like it's gone down. A positive block is a substantial improvement subjectively and by uh, evaluation. So their grip strength may improve, their range of motion may improve, their ability to hold in the roost may be improve, and the patient is able to tell the difference. And a substantial improvement of that strongly points to the opportunity to successfully help them by decompressing those muscles.